Over the 20-year history of the Battlefield franchise, there have been many great maps worthy of praise. Some maps become legendary, icons themselves of the Battlefield series and worth remembering for their balance, uniqueness, and special gameplay. This is the story of the best maps of Battlefield. Second only to Strike at Karkand in terms of city map popularity in Battlefield 2 is Sharky Peninsula. One of the most densely packed maps in the entire game, Sharky is an urban design tailored for excellent infantry experiences. At the same time, it goes above and beyond the typical ground game by including multiple attacker deployments and, most notably, attack helicopters. True to its name, the map sits on a high, rocky peninsula. Significant terrain elevation changes within the city and around the outermost hillsides create tiered street layouts, natural barriers, and verticality elements where an accidental fall might force a player to take a very long walk to re-enter the battle. Sharky Peninsula is a conquest assault game type layout. The Middle Eastern Coalition is attacking the US defenders in a very constricted space, and what usually results is fast-paced, high-intensity gameplay with only minor issues. As with many other Battlefield 2 maps, Sharky came in three size variations for 16, 32, and 64 players, all of which remain Conquest Assault. The 32 player and 64 player variants were almost exactly the same. Both of these sizes utilized the full scale of the map with all attacker deployment locations, vehicle assets, and flag locations, save for one added in the north on the 64 player layout, which comprises the alleyway. The entire city can be categorized in five sections. The western side, consisting of both the city entrance and the surveillance post flags, is tightly packed with houses and apartments only a few of which can be entered. The roads making their way from the west allow for different armor pathing options into the city. The amount of walls and cover make it a fierce battleground for infantry. The city entrance is a tiny objective tucked next to the side of a building. It sits in an area of tiered elevation, ideal for defensive play against the oncoming attackers. Three main roads pass nearby allowing vehicles a chance to swiftly make it through to the city proper. The city entrance, thanks to its small size and the inclusion of a higher building just across the street, make it a difficult point to capture as players can be bombarded by grenades and claymores litter the area. The surveillance post down the street to the east sits along a substantial drop, largely blocked from view by an indestructible wall. A much larger capture radius than its neighbor, it is also well protected by sandbags and mounted LMGs. A tow launcher on the corner is perfectly placed to make short work of enemy armor nearby or on the road. The north of the map is again an area of houses and apartment buildings. A single road leads through a slightly elevated and tightly spaced zone containing the alleyway flag. Another small flag radius, it sits at the corner of a building next to an explosive barrel. Although there is a lack of cover, its position allows vehicles to easily be in the capture zone. Down a steep drop from the cliffs along the surveillance post to the west and the alleyway to the north lies the flat but extremely packed construction site. A single flag sits on the roof of the easternmost building. There are plenty of ways to reach the top from ladders, stairs, and a steel beam from the opposite structure. A large crane also sits in the area, which players can scale if they get lucky enough not to be killed on the way up. The crane provides the second highest location on the map. Going south from the construction site are two roads and a set of staircases located along tiered walls, which sharply descend on the way to the beachfront. A number of apartments are located along the main road, as is the largest structure in the area, the hotel, which features a flag just in front of the intersection. Lastly, moving east from the construction site takes players to both the main offices complex of the 16-player layout, and further up the hill, the prize of the map, the TV station, one of the largest accessible structures in all of Battlefield 2. A staircase from the ground floor climbs all the way up to the rooftop, 
where the attack helicopter for the U.S. team can be found. The TV station flag sits within the second floor room and extends out to the small balcony. A ladder is positioned to climb up here, but is extremely vulnerable. The objective is among the most difficult to capture in Battlefield history, at least when teams are paying attention. Between Claymores, C4, and unlimited grenade spam thanks to the support players on the central staircase, this control point and the staircase itself is almost insurmountable. Squad leaders holding up in the central staircase make it a vertical meat grinder of epic proportions. Outside the station, a courtyard and wall protects respawning players. A tow in placement sits at the end of the main road, next to where the US tank spawns. The 16 player size map, essential and widely known for 8 vs 8 competitive matches, revolves around three control points. The construction site, the main offices, which is exclusive only to this version, and the TV station. The mech team begins at the beachfront hotel, and both teams only possess a single tank and light transport. At the start of almost every round of Sharky Peninsula, two things immediately occur. First, mech players spawn at one of three uncapturable deployments, which is a unique and greatly beneficial aspect of the map, given it avoids a single route opening meat grinder. There is the Clubhouse in the northwest, which spawns three Vodnik light transports and a BTR-90. The outskirts to the west, which provides another two Vodniks and a T-90 tank. And there is the Beach House, far to the south across the bay from the main city. It provides the mech team with a further two Vodniks, two rib boats, and the Mi-28 attack helicopter. The majority of the mech team will spawn at the outskirts and push as fast as they can across the field toward the first western US flag, the city entrance. More vehicles and players will rush the city from the other deployments. This is one of the great things about Sharky. The multiple deployment options allow for different routes of attack. Mech players can almost entirely avoid the grind at the city entrance if they want. On this western front, the elevation advantage and the street choke points create a minor grind allowing the US side to defend well, and the Conquest Assault game mode has a chance to temporarily flourish. Second, while this mad dash to the city takes place, several players spawn at either the beach house for the mech team, or the roof of the TV station for the US, and try to grab each team's respective attack helicopter. Almost immediately, the battle begins. You might not be able to see the other team's chopper through the fog, but knowledgeable players know it's there. There is a moment of extreme tension after liftoff, as both helicopters actually sit at the extreme edge of each other's TV missile range. Well-coordinated crews, or even a lucky shot, can tip the balance of the round for several minutes immediately. The most diehard of experienced players might even try to use the tow launchers at the hotel and beachfront to land a pixel shot on the attack helicopters before they can take off. Taking a moment to talk about the attack helicopters on the map, we need to understand why these vehicles work here and why there are lingering issues. Attack helicopters in Battlefield 2 are powerful, more so for the strength of the TV missile than of the rocket pods or the gunner position. Everything a TV missile hits gets killed instantly. This makes one chopper a major threat. However, there are several things about both Battlefield 2 and the map in general which balance its capabilities. With the fog of war restricting player visibility, these choppers cannot fly at a maximum altitude and rain death for long periods. They must fly fairly low to provide a clear line of sight. Moreover, the network lag of Battlefield 2 and of the refractor engine in general makes hitting targets with the co-pilot gun very difficult, unless you really have some game experience. Then there are the multiple Stinger AA emplacements found around the map. Weak and somewhat cumbersome as they are, these provide a meaningful nuisance to keep an enemy helicopter at bay for a short time. Though you might get lucky with a wire-guided rocket hit every now and then, this is extremely difficult and does not guarantee a kill. A better option is the HMG damage to helicopters, which is substantial. 
every 50 caliber machine gun found on top of tanks and light transports literally eats away the health of helicopters, and it's a fantastically effective way to deal with them. I wish subsequent Battlefield games retained this amount of damage. Lastly, there is the matter of the vehicle respawn timer. By default in Battlefield 2, it is extremely short, although it could be adjusted depending on the server. This meant that on Sharky, if you were the sole helicopter in the air, your time to actually farm enemy players in the city was short, as you had to keep an eye out for the respawning enemy attack helicopter, giving at least some peace of mind to enemies in the city. As a result, Sharky frequently ended up being a situation where the sole active helicopter simply continued to base camp the deployment of the enemy helicopter and spawn kill everything until it miraculously died in some way. But as with nearly all maps with attack helicopters, and despite some limitations present here, it's still not a perfect scenario. Major imbalance problems could occur if one team managed to steal the other team's helicopter. Not necessarily a difficult task given the long player respawn times. Facing two enemy attack helicopters was a brutal experience. The TV station had its own problem. While extremely defensible, when it did get captured, it stopped the US helicopter from spawning altogether, granting the MI-28 free reign over the map. And unlike attack helicopters of future titles, the MI-28 did have a major difference from the Cobra. Its gunner seat main gun shot explosive rounds, which, although having a slightly slower rate of fire, had such a large blast radius that it effectively compensated for the netcode lag, making it extremely deadly. Attack helicopters aside, Battlefield 2's Sharky is a great map largely because of the game's infantry mechanics and balance of heavy armor. Landmines are extremely effective on the tight streets. Rockets make short work of the few tanks and IFEs, infantry clearly have the advantage on the ground, and the flag density allows for teams to defend their last remaining possessions in great numbers. Sharky Peninsula made a return in Battlefield 3 in the Back to Karkan DLC. While remaining one of the better maps in the game, it did not have the team balance nor overall player satisfaction found on the original. Typical of Battlefield 3 maps, it suffered from lighting and sun glare issues. The terrain may have been improved and more forgiving, but the overall destruction of buildings sometimes made late game cover difficult to find. The TV station had an expanded floor space and flag radius, making it slightly easier to capture. This of course had major implications. The US team losing the flag meant that they lost their attack helicopter and tank, and now had no vehicles against the two tanks and one IFE of the Russian team. The armor advantage of the Russian team in Battlefield 3, with its additional tank, was completely unnecessary given the much stronger vehicles of the game. It made you feel like you were constantly encountering new enemy tanks, and they became difficult to deal with given that there was so much enemy infantry around to prioritize. Moreover, the increase in armor took away focus from the existential threat, the attack helicopters. Even though the map featured a lower skybox than usual and fairly restrictive map borders, the attack helos remained overall more deadly thanks to 3D spotting and clear line of sight. If the US team doesn't have a helicopter, it's just a disaster. Oddly enough, with Battlefield 3's Frostbite engine and no fog barrier, both helicopters not only can see each other on spawn, but face one another and are both within each other's TV missile range. If it didn't make sense in Battlefield 2, it makes even less sense in Battlefield 3. In retrospect, I think there may have been an opportunity to make Sharky a conquest map simply by adding an aircraft carrier in the sea to the north. The attack helicopter could be placed here, and in the event of a full capture, US players could try and take boats from the carrier to counterattack. In Battlefield 2, the only real limiting factors of Sharky Peninsula remain the strength of the attack helicopters, the difficulty countering them, and of course the flaws of the Conquest Assault game mode which can either result in a quick full capture ending a round, or a complete spawn camping massacre on the sole remaining objective. 
verticality changes in terrain are interesting, though in some places can be excessive. Nevertheless, it remains a great close quarters infantry map with a unique set of vehicles, different objective designs, and multiple lanes for movement. Sharky Peninsula is as much a legendary Battlefield 2 map as Strike of Karkand.